Here's my analysis of the number 18 versus number 20 Baylor wins basketball game. I can tell you one thing. Arizona was too much with their defense. And that hurt them in this game. I mean, especially when they scored a third of their points from turnovers alone. I mean, the final score was 75 to 54. First of all, Arizona played good enough defense in this game. While Baylor couldn't, they had some good shots. I mean, like, in terms of open looks, but they couldn't knock them down. They missed some layups, too, which doesn't help. In addition, the turnover bug existed again. Arizona, some of those shots by Arizona were good. Shots contested. And, of course, we know points off turnovers does matter. The second chance points was about even at 10 apiece. But everywhere else, it nearly advantage Arizona. First of all, Arizona shot 47.5% from the field. 29 for 61. 8 for 16 on threes. 9 for 12 on free throws. 35 rebounds. 6 of those offensive. But they converted 10 second chance points. So, 17 assists. They had 11 steals in the game. 6 blocks. Only a committed 11 turnovers. 14 fouls. And they had 12 points off the bench. Baylor only had 11 points off the bench. And that was clearly... And the starters for Arizona scored more. Arizona had three players in double figures. I mean... Baylor shot the ball 32.8%. 21 for 64 to be exact. 6 for 23 on threes. Some of those threes were open looks. They just couldn't knock them down. It was like... In, then out. Six for eight on free throws. At least the free throws were not an issue. 41 rebounds. It's 15 of them offensive, but the problem is he didn't get enough second chance points. 16 assists, which is not a terrible number, though you like the number higher. Five steals. It could have been better there. Two blocks. Not as good as Arizona. But 19 turnovers. Oh, uh, uh, uh. 15 fouls. I mean, they only had two double digit scores. And I'm going to say this right now. Asia Blackwell did not play in the second half period. Because she was, they were treating her knee again. So, oh no. And of course, no Kendra Gillespie for the game. She's day to day with a foot. And also... Kyle Abraham didn't play either, but I'm going to go individual stats here. Jamie Asbury had an off game. 2 for 8 shooting for 5 points. 0 for 2 on 3s. 1 for 2 on free throws. 1 rebound, 3 assists, 1 steal, 1 turnover, 1 foul. Jane Owens was the leading scorer in the game. 15 points, 5 for 14 shooting though. 3 for 7 on 3s. 2 for 2 on free throws, 6 rebounds, 8 assists, 1 steal, 2 turnovers, 1 foul. Sarah Andrews had 14 points, but she had a rough night, too. 5 for 16 shooting, 2 for 6 on threes, 2 for 2 on free throws, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 block, 3 turnovers. you got to take care of the ball. 4 fouls. Darion Lopage bugs in 13 minutes. She only scored 2 points, 1 for 4 shooting. you got to have more production than that. And 6 rebounds. The rebounds was there, but the problem is, she wasn't scoring enough. Two turnovers. Alan Bickle needs to work on the turnover bug, too. I mean, seven points on three for seven shooting. One for four on threes. Eleven rebounds, which is good. One assist. Four, two, I mean, two steals. One block. But four turnovers and one foul. That's way too many turnovers. But, I mean... Asia Blackwell in only in seven minutes. Two points on one for three shooting. Oh, for one on threes. Two rebounds. Two turnovers. One foul. Jan Van Gijnbeek only played two minutes in the game. Zero points. Oh, for one shooting. Oh, for one on threes. One turnover. After that, she didn't play that much. Bella Fontoria had nine points on a four for eight shooting. 
0 for 1 on threes, 1 for 2 on free throws, 4 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 steal, 2 turnovers, which is still too much, 4 fouls. Kyrie Ferreira has 0 points on 0 for 2 shooting, 0 for 1 on threes, 1 rebound, 1 turnover, 3 fouls. Erica Porter played 3 minutes, 0 points on 0 for 1 shooting, 1 rebound, 1 turnover. This was clearly a game that whatever caught gone wrong did nearly. Except the free throws was good in this game in terms of percentage. But I know that's only eight attempts though, but still. Every team has a clunker game, Baylor fans. So chill out. And not only that, it's December. There's one more non con game than all those conference games. This team has not been healthy all year long. And eligibility issues for Adre Edwards still. And we're hoping we could get her back, get her to play in a game in conference here. So, and sometimes what doesn't kill you doesn't, will not make you stronger. They're going to learn from this. I mean, now, this turnover bug needs to be addressed and I have no doubt they're going to address that as well as the toughness issues I mean and then all of the other issues in the game so what do these two teams have going forward Arizona has UT Arlington at 6 and 5 their turnover bug I mean, they could force turnovers too so it's not even at UT Arlington they have 7 4 Arizona State at home in Tucson, at Cal, that's 9 and 2. At number 2, Stanford. Then Oregon State, that's 7 and 4. I'm going to tell you right now, this Arizona team could very well finish as high as second in the Pac 12. I think they could do it. But I know Utah and Oregon are good, and Stanford, of course, is good. That's just naming some teams right there. Now for Baylor, they have Long Beach State as a last non-con game. They're five and four currently. They should win that game in theory. TCU's five and five on the thirty-first, and now it's even at home. That should be a win in theory too. But I tell you, they have at number twenty-four Oklahoma. They have to play get ready for that challenge. At number 22, Kansas, they're undefeated. And they're, they're not like Arizona in a way in terms of defense, but they do pressure defense in the half court. So then they got Oklahoma State, that's 9-2, nine, nine and, and that's even in Waco. So, hey, that's just even five games right there. And I can tell you something. Not many teams are going to be similar to Arizona in terms of defense. The closest team is Texas. If I'm being completely honest, I mean, I don't know about West Virginia and Oklahoma State, but I definitely know Texas is that team. That's similar in terms of like full court stuff. So, and physicality too. So, there's a lot of time before we get to play Texas. And like I said before, it's December. Chill out. There's a lot of games left here. 19 games to be exact. And it's not including conference tournaments before the postseason. So every team has one of those games that they want to forget and move on. This, is, this was one of them. So let's just don't look back in anger. And focus on the next game here. Let's go. Anyways, if you like this content, hit the like and subscribe. I right, see you guys later. It's on the road to 500 subscribers now. Here we go.